All right, so let's start off this innings of the Sports Max Zone with cricket. West Indies are on the verge of defeat in the first test against England at Lords, trailing by 171 runs in the second innings with four wickets in hand. While at stumps, the Windies were 79 for six, batting the second time, with Joshua the Silva not out on eight. Alec Atenes has so far top scored with 22, while James Anderson, Ben Stokes and Goss Atkinson have two wickets each. Well, England were dismissed earlier in the day for 371, with Jaden Seals taking 4 for 77 against half centuries from debutant Jamie Smith and former captain Joe Root. Harry Brook was also in the run, scoring 50 of 64 deliveries. Well, Jaden Seals, he spoke after the day's play. Really had to work for it. The batsmen didn't make it easy. They played their shots, they waited, they bided their time, waited for the bad balls. So credit to the batsmen and I'm just very thankful again to bowl the way I did and got the wickets for the team. Yeah, we'll take every moment in this game as a learning experience, the good and the bad, and try to improve on the bad and just keep working on the good as well. So yeah. Well, Fazir Mohammed was on radio commentary and he joins us to review the day. Good afternoon, Faz. How are you? Not too bad at all, Mariah. Yeah, so Faz, you know, just to pick up from that soundbite that we heard from Jaden Seals, I'm going to start with the positive, and in my estimation, it has to be the bowling. The one thing I would commend the West Indies bowlers on is the fact that although the English batsmen, they got starts, what I liked about the Windies bowlers is they prevented them from getting into three figures. And that, for me, is a big deal because if anybody went on to score a century today, we'd even be in a bigger problem, a more embarrassing situation. So for me, kudos to the bowlers for putting up the fight in which they did today. I agree to a certain extent uh, be because, yes, the fact that no one went on to get three figures uh, does represent a, a level of persistence from the West Indies bowlers. But but again, in, in the same way that uh, we spoke about it yesterday, uh, wanting to see a greater level of consistency uh, from the bowl bowlers from the, the very outset, we didn't see that at the start of the, of the morning because uh, England were going at better than a run a minute. Uh, and indeed, while it may not have been at the rate that we've seen previously with all this talk about Baz Bowl and, and how much they're going to be ultra aggressive, they, they weren't really. It was much more measured. It was clearly a recognition that you can't just go recklessly all the time, as England found out in India earlier this year, where they won the first test and lost the next four. But really, at the end of it all, they capitalized on the inconsistencies. A classic example was Alzari Joseph, uh, who bowled two leg side delivery. The, the, his back on a square along the ground and immediately Craig Brathwaite responded by moving a slip to the deep backward square leg position. And you can't set a feel for bad bowling. It, it makes life very difficult for your captain, as we discussed yesterday, whether or not you're talking about tactics and being innovative, being aggressive, uh, be, being creative. You can't really do any of that if your bowlers aren't sticking to a particular plan. But yes, in the end, they persevered and got the reward. But to be straightforward, by then, uh, the, the English was so far ahead, it was just a matter of how much their lead would end up being. Yeah, and Faz, you talk about sticking to the plan, and then today, Gurukesh Moti, he bowled and had an instant impact with the ball. It got a lot of people, you know, raising their eyebrows and wondering, why didn't he bowl as much yesterday? Well, it's an obvious question, and it's a question that has been asked many, many times over. In fact, uh, during commentary, I was, uh, was chatting with Phil Tufnell, the former England left-arm spinner, and, uh, and he again r r raised his eyebrows and uh, almost sighed in despair yeah. with, with this sort of situation where it still seems that you go to a spinner as your very last option, unless it's a raging turner, as we saw in Zimbabwe when uh, Moti picked up 13 wickets more than a, a year ago. Uh, and in this situation, again, you exhaust the options with your faster bowlers. Nothing wrong with that if the pitch is very helpful. But clearly in this case, they weren't really delivering. But there again seemed to be a last resort attitude towards using the spinner. This time around, we saw the rewards. We got Ben Stokes and Joe Root uh, just before lunch especially and, and, and seemed to be far more effective. But uh, again, there, there seems to be this 
whether it's cast in stone, whether it's a mindset for, for, for generations in West Indies cricket, a reluctance to use a spinner as an early attacking option if it feels that the, the conditions and the quality of the bowler will allow for that sort of thinking. Yeah, and it's really, really disappointing when you see the player come in today and have that impact, you know, you can't help but ask the question, why? Now, Faz, the area that I've been dreading to talk about, the batting department, and as Lance said in the opening, we've been dealing with this for quite some time. You know, the batting has been failing us. It has been so, so inconsistent. Today, we saw that Craig Brathwaite, the skipper, the person that a lot of us are hoping can, you know, put, on, put up the runs, create that solid foundation at the start and then allow the youngsters, the new ones making their debut to come in. Of course, he also was dismissed um, by James Anderson, giving him his 500th wicket. Then Kirk McKenzie, um, he left without being able to score. Um, gone for LBW. Very, very disappointing because he gave Ben Stokes his 200th wicket. And I'm reeling off all these stats, but the good stats are going for England. And, you know, our batting continues to be a glaring discussion. It is. And uh, the fact that the West Indies won in Brisbane, that famous victory in January, had a lot to do, of course, primarily with the outstanding bowling led by Shamal Joseph. But the fact that the West Indies got over 300 runs in the first innings, which has become a rarity uh, for the West Indies, especially away from home. And uh, again, drawing on, on the, the, the opinion of, of people who know a lot more th than I would, someone like an Alistair Cook, the former England captain and very successful opening bat before he retired just a few years ago in a blaze of glory, getting 100 in his final test match, he pointed out that when it comes to the, the basics of batsmanship, of the West Indies players, the young ones, he is seeing a lot of potential. But again, it's about that ability to concentrate for long periods. Yet again, we saw, for example, Alec Athanas, with all of his experience, all of his ability, uh, following a delivery outside the off stump and getting getting caught, uh, caught, uh, caught behind. Uh, we saw, uh, of course, uh, the, the new man uh, uh, opening the batting and uh, Mikhail Louis uh, just after a water break, a loss of concentration, he went caught behind. Uh, Kirk McKenzie, we're just looking at his dismissal right now with Ben Stokes bowling between wicket and wicket, trapping him LBW. And, and again, it's a situation where it becomes very repetitive, depressingly repetitive from a West Indies point of view, where you see players who clearly can play their shots, there's no issue with that, but test match batting is a lot more more than playing shots. It's all about being aware of the situation, being able to concentrate for long periods, because at the end of the day, 22 or 32 or 25 doesn't really help anybody when you're facing such a huge deficit. Yeah, Faz, you just so said something that triggered in my mind the, a critical issue with this team, and that has to do with with experience in some of the, the, the top batters. You just said Athenes, with all of his experience and all of his talent, and the obvious question is, um, not that much experience, only four test matches behind him. We know he, he has talent, but isn't that a glaring issue here? We, we, we have players tackling English conditions when they don't, they don't have the know-how and the, and the experience to handle this, this, this testing assignment. Absolutely, and it would have been my error if I referenced all of his experience because he really doesn't have a lot of experience. Yes. You're absolutely right. When it, it, it works out, as, as, as happened in, in, in Brisbane, where the West Indies are able to pull off a famous victory, it tends to paper over that huge crack. And, and, and that is an ongoing concern. The question is, how do we resolve this situation? And that's why, as and again, I have to reference what, what Reds Pereira would have said on this program uh, earlier in the week about the lack of preparation. As far as talking about a team which has limited experience, especially with your batting lineup, playing just one three-day match, and, and feeling that could ever be satisfactory to, 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 to get them attuned to what is required to play a three-match test series in England, when the majority of them would not be familiar with these conditions, would not be familiar with the climate, with the, with the quality of bowling, with the swinging ball, the moving ball, uh, the, the nature of the pitches. So th th there are a lot of issues tied in there, but we've covered this ground so many times over, Lance. I mean, in, in the years that sports marks would have been on, it's, it's become almost repetitive to bring up this particular issue. Yeah, and Mariah touched on it earlier on that the bowling was certainly in part a, a, a bright spot on a dismal outing here for the West Indies, but 
we, we have to accept, and you alluded to it yourself, as that um, the England total could have been much higher. But there were aspects of the West Indies bowling that was testing and uh, determined. And uh, Jaden Seals picked up four. Um, your thoughts quickly on, 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 on his effort in the field today with the ball. He didn't do a bad job because, remember, he's coming back into test cricket after 19 months. And when you, you're again getting attuned to the situation, it, it, it might take a while. But we have to remember, Lance, this is test match cricket. And there's really no, no sympathy from the opposition, certainly, when, when it comes to a situation like this. So you can't expect to be put under immense pressure. And this is precisely the situation. He bowled well. He kept it under control to, to a great degree. Uh, but having said all of that, when you come into a second day's play, and your opponents are 183 for three after you were routed for 121. They really are in total control. And it was really a situation where you were looking for the, the, the early successes that could peg England back significantly. That didn't happen. But, but notwithstanding that, yes, he would have done well to pick up those four wickets. But in the end, it was about England looking to cash in and capitalize, especially after lunch, as quickly as they could to try to get the West Indies in and get as many wickets as they could. So yes, credit that he was able to get four wickets, credit to Moti and the other bowlers for trying to, to tighten things up. But again, the horse had bolted from the stable a long, long time ago. Yeah, Faz, I'm not sure if you saw the interview pre-tour with yeah. Brian Lara suggesting that the West Indies needed to be strategically tactical, they needed to be aggressive and not wait for things to happen. I'm not sure if you saw that interview with him, but I'm looking back on, 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 on the things he said, and I must say I, I felt it while he was saying it, that, you know, Lara has phenomenal skills. So maybe it is that what is easy for him, you know, is like climbing a mountain for someone else. But were his comments realistic, as in a, a, a challenge for the West Indies to, to carry out the kind of application that, that he, he, he thought was necessary to do well on this tour? Do you think this team was equipped to do those? Did you hear the interview, by the way? To be fair, I didn't hear the interview, yeah. but the, given given the, the, your, your summation of it, yes. I, I think it really depends on the situation that the West Indies find themselves in. Because uh, look at the situation at the start of this test match, just a, a, a day ago. Heavily overcast conditions, ball moving around, uh, and you've got a, a batting lineup that, that is massively inexperienced. If you, you counter-attack then, if you take on the bowlers then, and 121 all out becomes 56 all out, well, you, you know what the reaction would be. You could argue, well, it doesn't really make a difference now. West Indies are going to lose by an innings anyway. So, so therefore, you have to ask yourself, if you're defending now 121, how do you respond? Do you really go with that ultra-aggression? Does it make sense? Is it within the one, first and foremost, the capability of the West Indies bowlers to maintain a sustained level of consistent attack and bowl to their field. The evidence yesterday was that they weren't. And also, secondly, and probably just as importantly, is the captain, Craig Brathwood, so inclined to have that aggressive attitude and to say, look, we need to gamble here. Let's try and get as many wickets as we can early on, even if it may cost us a few boundaries. And I don't think Craig, Craig Brathwood is of that, that type of mentality that suggests that he could be as innovative and aggressive or even creative as Brian Lara might want to be. Yeah. All right, fans, we're going to leave it there. Disappointing for the West Indies. The uh, likelihood is that they will lose this match uh, tomorrow. Um, but I, I, I'm not even sure what to say because in the past year and a half, we had seen some, some, you know, some incline, if you look at, at what, what they were, were producing, and even a slight upgrade in their world rankings as well in Test cricket. But uh, the last couple of days would be demoralizing for West Indies cricket fans. Let's hope that they will put this, whatever happens, behind them and do better in the second test. That, that is certainly the hope. But um, yeah. again, for, for all those uh, long suffering West Indies fans, it, it really is like a roller coaster ride. One minute you're up, next minute you're down, the next thing you know, you're suffering from travel sickness. <laughs> all right, Faz, we'll talk tomorrow, I'm sure. Take care. Yeah, okay. Um, that sums up our cricket segment here on the Sports Mac Zone on this Thursday. We'll be back. Still a lot more to come on the show today, and uh, you'll hear more about that after the break.